Thank you very much, John. It's really wonderful to be here. <clears throat> it's wonderful to be also speaking after all these young people. Uh, wonderful to see their enthusiasm, their interest in, in uh, Gulf affairs. My remarks, I will try to answer a <clears throat> question. Do we need a new security architecture in the Gulf? Uh, after the September 14 attacks on Saudi Arabia, uh, many countries have proposed new security arrangements in the Gulf. Scholars as well, experts. I don't want to denigrate all their work. I think it has been very useful. Uh, but I'm going to propose something instead of reinventing the wheel I would argue that we already have a security architecture that's working quite fine, actually, despite the attacks on the 14th of September. During last month, during the general debate of the United Nations, several countries actually proposed new architecture, new security architectures. I think some were done with good intentions, and some probably had ulterior motives, I don't know. Uh, Russia, for example, proposed a new architecture for the Gulf, uh, which is refurbished from previous versions that Russia has also had also proposed. I think it's it's a good coherent proposal, but it's not needed. I think, and I think what what it had in uh, in common with many other proposals is the denial or the weakening of existing institutions, existing arrangements, denial of agency on the part of the Gulf countries because of an attack on the oil installations in Saudi Arabia. Yes, I mean, it was a drastic, it was a sudden, it was a, but it, it doesn't need, we don't need to uh, create new security architecture to deal with this. There were gaps, yes, can be dealt with. And I will argue, I will, I will try to explain what this architecture that exists uh, is like and, uh, and how it can be used to further the security of the Gulf. Uh, President Rouhani also spoke at the opening of the United Nations. And he uh, cynically uh, proposed uh, a regional arrangement led by Iran itself, despite the fact that I think everybody knew that Iran was behind most of the attacks that we have seen uh, since May and, and even before that. I think we have, we, we have the, the GCC had, has had over the last 38 years, has been able to uh, build a robust security arrangement uh, Yes, the GCC is a political and, and economic body as well, but, uh, but the security was always, security pillar was always an important component of its integration projects. One of them is the, the establishment of the Unified Military Command, a project that took five years to build, and it was crowned last November by the appointment of General Eid Shlui from Saudi Arabia as the new general commander of the Unified Military Command of the GCC. The, uh, the Unified Military Command is, is overseen by the Joint Chiefs of Staff of the Gulf countries, which have been meeting regularly despite the, uh, the rift that John uh, referred to between some of our member states. But nevertheless, military work has continued with participation from all six countries. Counterterrorism also has, has been a main focus of the GCC, especially in the last 15 years or so. Uh, it's the internal security or counterterrorism is dealt with through the Secretariat and also through the GCC police, which is based in Abu Dhabi, again overseen by the ministers of interior, who also have met despite the rift between the, the, uh, some of our member states. The 
security architecture that is built uh, around the GCC uh, is based on a, a mutual uh, military, uh, mutual, mutual defense treaty that was concluded in the year 2000, and it was ratified by all six member states. And it, what it does is that coordinates the work of all military services in the past prior to the establishment of the Unified Military Command there were separate services uh, coordination, and, and now that all of them are uh, together in the Unified Military Command. The Article 2 of the Unified, of the Collective uh, uh, tre uh, Defense Treaty is similar to Article 2 of the, uh, sorry, Article 2 of, the, of our Mutual Defense Treaty is similar to Article 5 of NATO. It says GCC security is indivisible and is the obligation of each member state to come to the defense of any other member state that, that uh, uh, faces external aggression. The, that article, Article 2 of the Mutual Defense Treaty was invoked in the most recent summit last May in Mecca and since then, actually, the coordination, the joint work, joint action by member states has increased. Now, what about alliances or partnership with external uh, powers? I think we can draw an important lesson from the events unfolding in northern Syria this month. When the U.S. decided to withdraw its remaining forces from that region, a security vacuum was created because the, the, uh, the alliance was only included a small faction of, of the Syrian uh, political body. Turkey launched its long-planned invasion of, uh, into Syria. Now, if you look at the 10-point accord that was reached this week by, uh, between Turkey and Russia, it's clear that it, it divides the security roles between these two countries, and, but it has also sidelined both the United States and SDF. The lesson I think we can, we can draw from that is that even though uh, foreign partnerships, external partnerships are important, they can be also volatile and subject to considerations beyond the local powers control. And that's something that the GCC has always noticed because uh, as you probably know, our relationships with the different administrations were not always uh, the same. We didn't always see eye to eye, uh, but we maintain the strategic relationship with, with the United States and other partners, as I will talk about uh, in a minute, but not as a substitute for, for regional collective uh, security arrangements. Uh, General McKenzie this, uh, this morning referred to the meeting that was held this week in Riyadh uh, that included 18 uh, countries. And it's, I think it's, it's, a, it's a case in point where even when you have, like Saudi Arabia has, when you have your GCC allies and your, your uh, own defenses, it's always important to keep, to keep uh, relations with, with your important partners. And, and look at the list of the countries in addition to the six Gulf states, it also included Egypt, Jordan, the US, UK, France, Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, Greece, and Pakistan, New Zealand, and New Zealand. Uh, the relationship with, with these countries is not the same, and yet Saudi Arabia has called on them to come to Riyadh to discuss how to respond to the latest attacks in the Gulf, attacks on, on uh, maritime shipping and also on uh, oil installations. The, the meeting which was held on Monday uh, made it very clear, as you can see probably from the general communique, made it very clear that all 18 countries supported Saudi Arabia's uh, right to defend itself, to defend its territorial integrity, to defend its, its uh, infrastructure. Uh, and also they, they said in the communique, the commitment by the 18 Joint Chiefs of Staff that they will coordinate to provide the support that Saudi Arabia may need, uh, and that they will meet again on November 4th to decide precisely the division of labor between the 18 countries. Uh, 
another example also I think was referred to by General McKenzie, so I'll not go into detail, is the, uh, the decision by the United States to increase its military presence in Saudi Arabia. Uh, and uh, the, the remarks by uh, Secretary of Defense Mark Esper were, I think, quite uh, uh, on spot because uh, he talked about the, the need to, uh, uh, to establish, again, probably reestablish after the September 14th attacks, to establish deterrence that Iran has, should have no illusions that the alliance, the, the partnership between Saudi Arabia and the United States and also its other traditional allies uh, is strong and that they are ready to work with Saudi Arabia. So then the, the Gulf security architecture does exist. The foundation, the foundation that uh, is the Saudi Arabia's own effort, of course, but also those of its GCC allies and the GCC well-established collective security instruments, which I don't have time to go over all of them. Uh, but it also allows for uh, GCC external partners because protecting international waterways and Saudi Arabia's and other Gulf states' uh, oil facilities is an international uh, responsibility because it provides energy for hundreds of millions of people. So the interests of the United States and the, and the GCC coincide. It's not, it's not a, a patron-client relationship. It's really... Uh, it's a, a mutually beneficial relationship where both economic interests and security interests, as were uh, explained in, uh, in the remarks by General McKinsey this, this morning, uh, they overlap. Uh, the global security interests of the United States and the regional interests of the GCC and of Saudi Arabia uh, coincide. Uh, however, I think we live, as you probably recognize, we, we live in a in a new system, a multipolar system. And as such, I think it's wise to diversify the sources of your partnerships. And that's what the GCC is now considering. So in addition to our traditional uh, partnership with the United States that goes back, what, 80 years, and with the United Kingdom that probably goes more than that, uh, we're also considering uh, establishing strong relationships and uh, with, with uh, Dozens of countries, actually, we have established what we call a strategic dialogue. Strategic dialogues are actually ways to explore and understand the interests uh, between uh, of the GCC and of, and of our key partners to find out whether uh, there, are, there is room for, uh, uh, for working together, either economically or on security or politically. Uh, and we, we, I'll give you one case of China, for example. China, as you know, is very much interested in creating a strategic partnership with the GCC and with individual member states as well. And we are interested as well, so we're exploring that. It's not to replace the traditional partnerships with the United States, because that will stay. In fact, I think our, our uh, hope is that it will be strengthened, and as you probably know, there has been a proposal on the table for about the last four or five years to establish a treaty-based alliance between the Gulf states and, and the United States. Hasn't happened yet, but I think the, the idea is there to distinguish the special relationship uh, from the other partnerships. Uh, in terms of trade, of course, the, the GCC has almost completely diversified. Uh, we don't have any, any trading partner uh, that controls or the, that, that uh, has more than 11% of our overall trade. Unlike in the past where we had about 25% of our trade was with the European Union, about 15 with the United States. Now we have a more balanced uh, trading relationship uh, where China is now about 11%, the EU is about 11%, and the United States is about 8%. Uh, yes, China has gained at the expense of uh, of our traditional partners economically or in terms of trade, but not in terms of investment, for example, other important relationships. Uh, it's a specialized relationship between us and China, uh, and we, uh, our FTA negotiations with China are very close to completion, uh, while with the EU, for example, the, 
negotiations have been stalled for a long time. And with the United States, although there are some discussions, they haven't even started. Uh, However, there should be no misunderstanding. I think there was a statement made by a, a, a Pentagon official a while ago, I forget his name. Uh, he was very critical of this trade relationship between China and the Gulf states. I don't think it should cause any worries because we're under no illusions uh, that the, the GCC-US security and economic relationship uh, is very important for us, it's strategic, and will remain solid. And there is, there is a, after 2015, after the Camp David summit, uh, what a dozen working groups have been established and they're working uh, in almost every field. Yes, the focus has been security, but it also covers other areas as well. The US global interest and the GCC regional interest, at least uh, now, uh, greatly overlap, unlike with other, uh, other partners. Uh, so this relationship, uh, will, will endure, will continue, and we hope will flourish as well in, in the coming years. So thank you very much.